Casey's going to talk a little bit about seating in the wind, but you don't really notice it. But what about 40 miles an hour wind? Uh, it wouldn't bother me any. Wow. Uh, the wind don't bother seating. You get a little more dusty, but we don't get dusty in the cab. How far do the tips of the drill go down into the ground? Uh, Probably about an inch or so. An inch? Yeah. This drill we got to adjust because the wings are going deeper than the center. So we got to do that this summer, try and get it where it's level. What what kind of drill is this? It's a John Deere. Uh, no, I can't remember the model number. Yeah, it's a John Deere drill. Are drills kind of like combines or tractors in the sense where there's a good, better models than others? Or is it pretty the same around the board? They're pretty much the same. A lot of these have the same pattern for, you know, building and stuff. I don't know if there's any good or bad in them. This John Deere, I like it. It raises out of the ground real high, where some of them, like the flex coil, doesn't really raise that high. Yeah. It just raises high out of the ground. If you got to crawl underneath and work on something, you got room, you're not crawling around that bad. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And also, this one is a toe behind, so that means that the tank is behind the drill or implement, and the flux coil drill is a toe between, which means that the tank pulls between. This one is a, you're able to see it a lot better, but the toe between means you don't leave any tracks after you go seating. Yeah, and you gotta get used to the toe between for tur turning corners because you can't see where your corner you're plowing. It's a lot more tricky, but yeah. then some people like not having any yeah. tracks left in their field. Yeah. I pulled that flex coil for quite a few years, six, seven years. Oh, wow. I got used to it. Do you prefer this one? Yeah, I like this one kind of better. I like the features of the cart and stuff I like better. Do you prefer the toe between or toe behind? Uh, it don't make no difference to me. I, behind's nice, so I like maybe that a little bit better. when it was last spring we could get in the ground and there was no snow out and it's, it's, uh, it's really a little cool but it isn't really germ going to germinate right away but it's here if we get some moisture we'll have the seed in the ground already for it. At what temperature will the germination? Anything about freezing I imagine. Yeah I agree with you on that. Here you can see the little fertilizer dots. All those white little dots are the fertilizer that was put in yesterday. But you couldn't see it in my farming in the snow video because it was all white out. Do you yeah. have to test the temperature of the ground or anything before you begin seeding? Ah, uh, some people do, I guess. We never do. I just, I go by what Chris and Mark say when they want to go seed and that's when we do it. And I'm, I'm always ready to go, so. Well, that's wonderful. Have you noticed many other people, would you say they're completed seeding? Are we early for the area? Uh, or what would I you think we're, some of them are way at, well into it. And, some haven't even started yesterday when we got fertilizer. He says a lot of people are waiting for the cheat grass to sprout and stuff, so they're kind of holding off starting. So there isn't really that a whole bunch that have seeded, but it's best to get it in because maybe one of these days it'll rain. It needs to rain real bad right now. It definitely does, and a lot of the time south of here will get rain and even an hour south and we won't get rain any time here. Usually yeah. we get very little rain. Yeah. How many inches of rain would be optimal after you seed? Oh, I don't know. You got, you just gotta get, take what it gives you. Yes, definitely. If you get rain, get a lot of rain, then you get long hot spell and they really don't do that much good. That'd be spread out a little. But like water in your lawn, you know, you can't flood it one day and then not water for a month. Yeah, definitely. It should be equally distributed. Yeah, but it never happens that way. No, not at all. A lot of the times it's too dry here. It's never really too wet. We don't have any, we virtually have no problems. I know some people put tile in their fields and stuff. We don't have any problems like that. No. We never get too much rain. We only get too little. Yeah. Have 
you ever run out of seed in a part like halfway through a pass before? Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, a lot of times I do. But it lets me know and I just pull out and go back and get, get it filled up and then I come back up and continue where I left off. How many acres would you say you planted um, this spring of lentils and spring wheat combined? Uh, 1,292.7 acres. Wow, that's oh, no, awesome. 1,321 point. And that's less than we would normally plant for in the spring? Yeah, sometimes a little more than that. Probably maybe another 1,000 acres. But I don't remember what I seeded winter wheat last year, but the two drill seeding, so, but yes. what I had seeded, I raced that when we started spring wheat, started the lentil. This year was unusual because um, I got a couple of questions on if our John Deere tractor that my dad just got is replacing the Case IH one, and it is, we're not trading it in, but my dad's going to sell it, so it is replacing it, and we usually have two drills going at the same time. So that's very unusual for us. But we spent so much time getting this one all ready, putting new hoses and everything on it. We could get in the field, so we just got this one going in the field instead of trying to get the other one going too. We didn't have a tractor at that time for the other one, so. Yeah, the tractor showed up a little bit later than we expected. shallower I don't know if you go deeper sometimes it won't come out of the ground yes that's you, you got to get the right magic place and everybody does it different I let Mark and Chris do the deciding how deep they want it because I that way if it's wrong I don't get the blame well that's a good idea that's like measuring out and calibrating the drills I calibrate it for spring week but normally I let Chris do it because then that way I can't get blamed if it is wrong. Right. Not, not that I'm going to get blamed, but no. I just I just rather have the responsibility get the expense on that that I didn't do it. Yeah, it's extremely expensive to seed, and it's one of the most important parts of farming because harvest is um, kind of the really fun part, but seeding is really really important because if you don't put a good seed in the ground the correct way, you're not going to have a harvest and be able to reap the benefits of that seed. And sometimes, at harvest time, we won't sell all of our crop. We'll keep some of it and we'll get it cleaned and we'll plant it next year. Is any of the seed this year from the bins? Ah, uh, the lentils was. Now, between lentils and spring wheat, did you have to clean out your tanks? Yeah, I, I didn't the fertilizer. But the lentil and the inoculant had to clean that out, and I had to change rollers around. I did that the other day, and I blew the tanks out and stuff. Yeah, that's important, and we do that with combining too. Before we move to a different field. Yeah. Not if it's all if it's all winter wheat and it's all the same variety, we won't do that. But sometimes, if we have different varieties, or from winter wheat to spring wheat, we'll definitely clean. I don't know, it's just doing something I like to do. I actually retired, but I don't want to be sitting around. So I enjoy doing farm work. Yes, and we love to have Darcy here, so that's great. And everybody's nice here, you know, they've been real friendly people, and I enjoy working for them. Well, I'm Plus, glad. It keeps me busy where I'm not sitting in my loud rocket chair or something. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I've had just a marvelous time with Darcy here in the yeah. Cedar, and I'm going to stop up there and That'll be the end of the ride for today. Today is also the end of se spring seeding. Yeah, well, it'll be done after today. It should be. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to learn more about how your food gets to your table. And follow Kate Ag on Instagram and Facebook, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G. Thank you so much for your knowledge of the drill and planting, Darcy. Okay, well, thank you. Nice talking to you on it. Yes, it was wonderful. Okay, yeah. bye. Bye. Guess who came to visit me? Oh, 
on these beautiful doggies. I just got out of the drill and here they are. You are so sweet. This is the best surprise ever. Where'd they go? Aw. Three dogs? Could this get any better? <laughs> Hi. I don't know their names, but they're our neighbor's dogs and they're just adorable. I've never met them before either. Well, what an introduction. Well, it was very nice meeting you. I think I have to go on my way, which is very sad. But it was just a pleasure. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You're very sweet. This field that I just went seating with Darcy in is actually the field that my wheel fell off in the combine. So that I kept driving, it fell off in one of these coolies I was cleaning up and it was just a bearing that was loose. It was nothing that I could have prevented, but it made me feel really bad. And so it came off in like one of, I think it was like this coolie that I was cleaning up right here. And then I drove all the way from there down to the end. And I also made a turn and started that way until the car guy noticed, hey, there's a wheel laying in the field. Is it any ones? And I said, oh no. <laughs> Thought that was a little fun. Kate farming fact. <laughs>